it's good to have you here. That's wonderful. That's good. We're going to give it just a minute, but for the month of uh, December, we'll be talking about self-compassion. And um, Dr. Kristen Neff has probably done the most research and she has much of what I teach. She usually has a method. And so this, this has a method. It can be sort of a lofty idea, self-compassion, but there are steps that we can take to increase that. Um, and the practice will look the same pretty much uh, through the month of December when we practice together. But each week I'll introduce um, maybe a new concept or some of the research around self-compassion. So it's interesting because many of us, you know, genuinely, automatically extend care and compassion to those around us just because we, we feel good when we're kind and caring for others. That, that really does come very automatic for most of us. But chances are that there's fewer of us that think about directing that compassion towards ourselves. That's what the research says anyway. And I, after having taught this for several years, I have found that to be true. Um, the research says too that um, to contribute to our real happiness and inner peace, um, we need to be able to have compassion for all people, but that includes ourselves. We often forget ourselves in that. And, you know, as I started learning this technique, the, the idea was new to me. And it sort of started to stir up some feelings around being self absorbed or self centered. So we're going to go over that eventually. But know if that's happening for you, it happened to me as well. Um, the Dalai Lama in his book, The Art of Happiness, says, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. And if you want to be happy, practice compassion. The question is, what does it mean to have compassion? And I think it's a little bit easier to start with, you know, having compassion for others. So when you think about having compassion for others, what comes up for you? Please take yourself off on mute so you can just talk about it for a moment. Yeah, yeah. please jump in. What I would say caring for somebody else and just showing kindness toward other people, being polite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kathy. I kind of, um, I was kind of thinking that word kindness came to me as well. Mm -hmm. um, being kindness and extending that grace to people. Um, I think when I mm -hmm. think of being compassionate towards somebody else, I think, um, I think that, mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe in a less than ideal situation, offering them the benefit of the doubt and, and trying to understand um, mm -hmm. kind of where they're coming from and, and their perspective maybe on something. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, it's offering understanding, it's offering kindness. And that's why I like to do this, you know, self-compassion after the loving kindness too, it's offering kindness to others. And, and usually we're offering compassion, um, you know, in lieu of judging them harshly, right? For something that might not be going right. So whether it's that they've made a mistake or wherever they might be in, in life at the time, um, where, however they are struggling, it's not judging them for the struggle, but rather being there with them and offering that sense of understanding that we probably too have been there at some point. Um, and self-compassion just involves, you know, acting the same way towards yourself when you are having a difficult time. You know, when you notice something about yourself that you don't like or circumstances in your life that aren't going well, um, to offer yourself that same kindness and understanding and it is a research validated method 
to stop judging ourselves as bad or good and to, to really treat yourself as you would a good friend. It's a method to, to stop the inner critic, to stop beating ourselves up, to, um, to stop when we feel like we're just not doing well in this game of life, right? And when do we need to do that? You know, it's like when we don't feel like we're enough, you know, when we feel like things are really difficult and hard. Um, there are many, many difficult aspects to dealing with a diagnosis, right? But yet we rarely slow down, for most of us anyway, this might not be true for you, but where we slow down enough to take time and really recognize to be fully present to just how hard and difficult things can be at the moment. Because we live in a culture that, that has um, an ethic around, I think it's that this like the stiff upper lip mentality, the no pain, no gain, we are a culture of trying to fix things um, rather than just being or a culture of doing. And so sitting with ourselves when it's difficult is just being with it, not judging it like you wouldn't judge a good friend. It's just offering that same attentiveness to yourself, not judging it though. There are also times in our life because we're human um, where we may actually be the cause of pain in somebody else's life through our actions, behaviors, and words. And instead of judging ourselves harshly for that, just recognizing that we are human um, and that it, it does happen. There are certain steps that we can take um, in terms of apologizing or making things right. But instead of beating ourselves up for it, having compassion. Um, we are, you know, imperfect human we're all having these imperfect human experiences, not that we're imperfect, but just these experiences, but we are each and every one of us intrinsically valuable and deserving of care. And, and that's the message with the, the loving kindness practice. You know, research shows us that through self-compassion, um, it's a, a powerful way to achieve emotional well-being and contentment, you know, by giving ourselves this unconditional kindness and comfort while embracing the human experience that we're having, as difficult as it might be, we can, we can mitigate the fear, the negativity, and the isolation. Those places can be very familiar to us. Um, and so this tight knot of self-judgment is what we can dissipate through a self-compassion practice. Um, it really does help us to start dissolve the judgments, the criticism, and replace them with feelings of a peaceful acceptance, um, a connectedness. And many people assume that if we have self-compassion for others, or I'm sorry, not self-compassion, if we have compassion for others, that we automatically have self-compassion. And actually, um, even though just the object of your kindness differs, um, there can be a difference that just because you have self-compassion for others doesn't necessarily mean that you have it for yourself. And so it is a practice and we can cultivate and grow our capacity for it. Um, people who practice self-compassion and have a greater capacity for it show some differences. So when they, when they looked at some of the research, they had fewer depressive symptoms, less negative emotions, not just less ne negative emotions, they had more positive emotions. And that aligns with our past research um, showing that it increases our, our, our well-being and that there are real, real resilience benefits to practicing self-compassion. Um, and that we really benefit from practicing. So there's, you know, there's, there's benefit to both having compassion and self-compassion, but we physiologically, what happens is we increase oxytocin, which increases our, our feeling of trust, safety, calm, generosity, connectedness, which actually decreases the cortisol in the body and increases, I know, um, we both haven't taken uh, heart math, but there's something called heart rate variability, 
and we want more heart rate. We want an increase in heart rate variability. Um, and, and it does that. There are researchers that have said self-compassion is like a healing balm that, that changes mental, emotional, and the biochemicals in the body. Um, there's evidence neurologically that, that self-criticism and self-kindness operate differently as brain function. They're literally on opposite sides of the brain, which is, which is really fascinating. In order to, next week we'll get into what it is not. This, this week we'll, we'll stop there and move into the practice. What's interesting about practicing self-compassion is that we actually <laughs> have to call up a little bit of suffering. So most of the practices we do here, I'd be asking you to kind of move away from that, draw inward, you know, and to move into relaxation. This can be a very relaxing practice. Um, but to start out, we ask you to think of something, um, you know, something that's going on and, and that's probably relatively easy to do right now. Um, but we're going to hold that and, and walk through the, the components of self-compassion. And Kristen Neff came up with this, the, the components of self-compassion the components of self-compassion and then turn it into a, a practice. Um, we will extend self-kindness. The components are, are all essential, which is the first one is self-kindness towards ourselves. The second one is to recognize that, that, um, that some measure of suffering is common um, in and amongst all humanity but this is just a human experience. And then to sit with some mindfulness around that. Um, so as you, as you do this, I, I do encourage you just like any other practice though, to get as comfortable as you can, let your body rest. I know Kathy, you're in your um, global setting. <laughs> I see those wonderful rocking chairs over there though. Sure. I've got a huge bean bag. I have yoga mats in my room, I'm good. Oh, okay, you are good. Yeah. Okay, so whether you want to lie down or you want to stay seated, um, it's totally up to you here. I want to get all of, yeah, there it is. So again, I am to remind you that to practice, we just need to actually call up just a little bit of suffering or something that is difficult for you. Maybe you're worried about something that has happened or might happen. I think about it, um, something that's difficult but not extremely overwhelming at, at this moment, especially if you are new to practicing this, which, Dr. Kristen Neff calls the self-compassion break. So find the situation and get in touch with it. What's going on? What, what might be happening? What might happen? Who said what? Just really bring the situation to life in your mind's eye. And I'm going to be saying a series of phrases these are the components of self-compassion. And just let these phrases sink in. This is a moment of suffering. And right now we're just bringing mindful awareness to the fact that suffering is present. And I invite you to find some language that speaks to you. You might just say something like, you know, this is really hard right now. 
or maybe you just acknowledge, you know, I'm struggling. But right now we're actually turning towards this difficulty, acknowledging it and naming it. And sometimes it's just enough to say, you know, this, this is a moment of suffering. And the second phrase is suffering is a part of life. And reminding ourselves of our common humanity. And again, here, finding language that speaks to you. You might say something like, it's normal to feel this way, just like you would say to a good friend. And maybe you might say, there are many people going through a similar situation. even though others' suffering may be different, or the nature of it might be different. The suffering is a part of life. It is a part of our being human. And the third phrase is, may I be kind to myself in this moment. And to support bringing kindness to yourself, I invite you, if you want, just to place a hand over your heart or anywhere really on the body that feels soothing and comforting. Just feel the warmth of your hands, the gentle touch. And just say to yourself, may I be kind to myself. And again, using any language that supports that sense of kindness. Maybe you speak to yourself like you would a good friend that you cared about who was going through a similar situation. And it might be something like, I'm here for you. And it's going to be okay. I deeply care about you. You can even try using a diminutive that feels comfortable, like, oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Or you could even try calling yourself by your first name. Anything that feels natural to express your deep wish that you be well and happy and free from suffering. And this is just a beautiful place to offer yourself loving kindness. And so saying to yourself, may I be well, healthy, and strong. May I be happy. May I abide in peace. May I feel safe and secure. May I feel loved 
and cared for. And then as you prepare to let go of this practice, notice how your body feels right now. And allow any sensations to be just as they are. Allow yourself to be just as you are in this moment. Accepting all facets of yourself and knowing that this being human means you encompass a full range of positive, neutral, negative emotions. We can celebrate the complexity of life. And knowing that if this was hard today, self-compassion is not always instinctive. It can be trained and developed. And that we can grow our capacity for it. We'll take a slightly deeper breath. And then whenever you are ready, maybe bring some movement into your fingers and into your toes. Move in a way that feels good. And if you can come back to your camera. Feel free to Take yourself off of mute so we can digest that practice a little bit. 